Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. What's going on guys, this is Rob, and I wanna try something a little bit different. A lot of you guys have asked me to cover Mortal Kombat comics, and with a trailer for the movie coming out, I figure we might as well go ahead and give it a shot. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna do an excerpt from the Mortal Kombat comics. We're gonna do the origin of Scorpion. We're gonna kinda of kick things off with this. And it's really more of just a test to see whether or not, you know, you guys are interested in this kind of thing. Uh, because Scorpion, I feel like, is probably one of, the, probably the single most popular character in all of Mortal Kombat, if I'm being honest with you guys. I mean, Liu Kang, I think is a close second, but when anybody is ever talking about Mortal Kombat, when they think of the game, the first person they think of is usually Scorpion. Sometimes Shang Tsung, sometimes Sub-Zero, right? But it, it really just kind of depends. So what we end up having here in this, this bit of a segment, and again, this is going to be a pretty short video. What we end up having here is basically a kind of conversation taking place in the Himalayas between Hanzo Hisashi, who is, which is his real name, but you guys know him as Scorpion, and Takeda. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe it's pronounced something like Takeda. I'm not 100% sure, but Takeda sounds like it's the correct pronunciation. But Takeda is basically the ward of Hanzo Hisashi. Not really his son, uh, not his biological son. Uh, he actually, the, the father of Takeda is a, a main character in the story. And depending on whether or not you guys are interested, we'll cover it from beginning to end because it's not super lengthy. It's not, an, it's not a super lengthy Mortal Kombat comic book series. It's like 36 issues. But the conversation starts going in the direction of an ability that Takeda had seen Hanzo use or seen Scorpion use, which was the ability to control Hellfire. And initially Takeda thinks it's like a style of martial art, right? It just takes time and mastery to be able to pull it off. But the reality is, is Hanzo basically tells him it's it's not a style, right? It's, it's not some kind of a style he mastered over time that is actually his curse. And so this is when we jump into the origin of Scorpion. Now, one thing to understand, the origin as it's given to us here is by no means an exceedingly in-depth origin of Scorpion, right? It's not like it's colossal and exceedingly nuanced. It's more of just kind of broad strokes. But what we're basically told is at some point in the past, Hanzo's family and his clan, the Shirai Ryu, are basically killed by Sub-Zero. Now, one of the things the origin doesn't really give us here is what's actually going on, right? So we can kind of, we'll sort of give you guys the real depiction of what truly happened uh, once we get done with this little bit, right? But when Hanzo Hisashi was basically executed by uh, by Sub-Zero by literally having his head ripped off of his body, the last thing he saw was his wife and child basically frozen to death by Sub-Zero, losing his family. And the result is that he died, but his soul simply just kind of kept on going. He was so filled with vengeance and rage that he never actually passed on. Instead, somebody basically grabbed him and then kind of brought him back even if only for a momentary period in time. And this, of course, takes place in the Nether Realm, which is more or less Mortal Kombat's version of Hell. Uh, but what you end up having is him basically being brought back by a guy named Quan Chi. Now, Quan Chi was not part of the original Mortal Kombat line of video games, right? Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3. He wasn't introduced until much later, but what had happened is they had retroactively brought his character in, right? So what they basically said is that Quan Chi has always been in the world of Mortal Kombat. We just didn't see him until recently. But he's a sorcerer in an exceedingly powerful one who's right up there with, with uh, Shang Tsung. Now, the reason why you see so much of Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat, to kind of step aside for a second, the reason why you see him so much is because he's the Emperor's favorite sorcerer. And so because of that, he's the guy that usually always gets the attention. Quan Chi is usually always vying to subvert the, the authority of, of Shang Tsung, and even to a greater extent, actually lead to the downfall of Shao Kahn and ultimately have him replaced or, or really uh, lead to the rise of Shinnok, one of the one of the fallen elder gods, or the only real fallen elder god that's out there, right? But he is, by all standards of measurement, a guy who's working against both Shang Tsung and Shao Kahn. But him resurrecting uh, Scorpion came by way of a bit of curiosity in the sense that he realized that the, the hellfire within the realm of the Nether Realm couldn't hurt uh, Hanzo Hisashi because he was just so filled with, with anger and vengeance, which Quan Chi realized he could use for his own ends. And so what he ended up doing was basically summoning Hanzo Hisashi away from his shackles and then imbuing him with the power of hellfire and basically pointing him in the direction of saying like, you know, we can get you, I can help you get revenge on the people who murdered your family. I can help you achieve that goal. And so using his hellfire and then showing up in the original Mortal Kombat tournament, he was just facing off against various people and then ultimately managed to kill Bihan, also known as Sub-Zero. The problem that Hanzo Hisashi had with all this though, is that no matter how much vengeance or no matter how many people he killed, that this fire kind of kept burning inside of him all the time. He was constantly driven by like rage and anger and hatred over his own over the loss of his own individual family. That's what that's one of the reasons why Scorpion has has really kind of remained as a mainstay and an exceedingly popular character in Mortal Kombat. One, because of the fact that his fatalities that he just like sets you on 
fire, which is, I mean, it's not cool to set people on fire, but in the game it is, right? The game is awesome. Plus he's just kind of a Hallmark character, right? He's one of the OG characters that's been around for a long, long time. And so there's a kind of grandfathered concept that goes in with this character. Like, yeah, man, he's been around forever and I absolutely love him. Uh, but it's also because he's exceedingly tragic. This is a guy who's lost everything. Once his origin became more concrete, once it was expanded beyond its original uh, depiction as it was given to us as Mortal Kombat fans, then it turned out he was an exceedingly tragic character. He was a guy who lost everything and was just governed by vengeance and rage and anger, right? That's the, the things that controlled his life, which for a lot of people was relatable, right? A lot of people could relate to that idea, just kind of having their life dominated by vengeance and, and anger. And so as a result of that, ultimately, even after his life was restored, after he was removed from being a kind of undead specter and being brought back to life in a in, in the, the true and proper way, he still had all that anger that governed him, right? All that anger that controlled him. Now, over time, he was able to basically curtail that, right? And he was able to bring his anger and his rage back under control and go back to being, you know, having some semblance of a normal or at least a relatively normal life. But whenever it is that he uses his hellfire, his curse is that if he does it for too long, he'll revert back into his, his almost maddening state, right? Just kind of the way that he used to be. And so that's why he always has to keep that part of his life completely in check. But jumping back to what we were talking about before, the reality is that Scorpion's family was not killed by Sub-Zero in the Lin Kuei clan. Instead, it was done by Quan Chi. Like Quan Chi was the one who basically manipulated all that stuff in order to bring Scorpion under his control and use him for his own ends. And so the reality is that when Scorpion killed Sub-Zero, he in effect killed the wrong guy. And that's one of the things that he kind of came to realize over time. Now, of course, it never really changed. It's not like he was like, oh, you know, and made, made you know, amends or anything, at least not that I'm aware of. Uh, but that's kind of the nature of, of Scorpion's origin. Right? That's the, the nature of the character that we know. He's a guy that lost everything only to find out that he was tricked into believing it was the wrong man and then killed the wrong man. And then in turn, when he was brought back by Quan Chi, who was the one that actually did it, he was in the service of Quan Chi until he was ultimately freed. And now he's been trying to live some measure of a normal life ever since, right? I mean, when I say normal, I mean normal within the realm of Mortal Kombat and the character of Scorpion, right? So, you know, fighting and killing people, that kind of a thing. <laughs> but always trying to keep that 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 darker version of himself under control, right? So uh, with that being said, guys, I know, again, this is a, a pretty short video, but we're gonna go ahead and bring this to an end. If you guys wanna see more Mortal Kombat stuff, let me know down in the comment section. I would love to hear your all's responses and to see what you all think. Uh, if you guys are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like, and I will catch you all later. Peace.